on a GDI system, it isn't the injector on time that controls engine RPM or fueling of the cylinders. It is the volume of the fuel from the high pressure pump that is controlled through a fuel volume regulator, sometimes called a fuel control regulator or a fuel relief regulator. Different manufacturers call it different things and it is a simple solenoid. Now here is a good picture of the fuel rails, the fuel lines, the injectors, and the high pressure pump along with that electric solenoid. This electric solenoid can be driven by the PCM with a different arrangement of drivers, high side, low side drivers. Some manufacturers decide to control this solenoid by supplying both B plus and ground through high and low side drivers while others just think that we're going to control the positive side or the negative side. It doesn't matter. What matters in this is that you know you're going to require a vehicle specific solenoid in order to work on the high pressure pump control slash relief slash volume solenoid. Now here's a photo of it in the lower right hand corner we see the electrical connector going to that solenoid. It's a two wire connector. This solenoid is duty cycle controlled. It means that the computer isn't just turning it on and off. It does so with a sense in order to control the volume. A low duty cycle is what's going to increase the pressure or the volume. This means that if this solenoid, if this control solenoid loses power, it's going to default the high pressure pump to the highest possible pressure this manufacturer designed it to deliver. Now the high duty cycle is what's going to be used to decrease the pressure and control it. This is a special note for the low pressure system. We're talking about the high pressure system, I know, but we've got to throw this in somewhere. The low pressure system is what we normally work with. It is a fuel pump inside the fuel tank. This system delivers fuel to the high pressure pump. Now the low pressure pump may run when the engine is off. We've already told you that in another selection, but we're telling it to you twice because it's so important. This pump, the low pressure pump, the one in the fuel tank, may run up to four or five times during a single six hour period. This is to maintain fuel rail pressure. So if the computer recognizes that the common rail pressure has dropped to a certain level, it will operate the fuel pump in the fuel tank to deliver fuel to the common rail. Now remember that the solenoid, the fuel control solenoid, when it doesn't have any power is wide open so the fuel would run directly through the high pressure pump to the common rail. A no or a low pressure signal from the fuel rail pressure sensor can cause a no spark condition. How's that happen? Well the computer recognizes low or no fuel pressure from the fuel rail pressure sensor. Now this could be that the rail is in fact low on pressure or it could be from a faulty sensor itself and then the computer will not attempt to fire the coil on plug units. So this is telling you diagnostically during a crank but no start, you have to check the fuel rail pressure sensor for input. Always check the residual pressure of the low fuel pressure pump for a no start or an extended crank because what supplies the high pressure pump is the low pressure pump. Now here is the bottom of a high pressure pump. We can see here where it has been riding on that special cam lobe from the camshaft. When we blow it up we can see it's all wallowed out. It's worn out and the cam lobe itself is worn out. Now these photos come from a vehicle that has GDI that had an extended crank in it. When you're working with the fuel pump, you're taking off, putting on or replacing it, always replace 
the fuel pump mounting bolts. Don't reuse them. Replace the gasket and of course the O-ring. The lower right hand corner the arrow is pointing to that O-ring that has to be replaced every time you take the pump off and on. Now don't forget to replace the fuel lines because the fuel lines are crushed to seal. That means you torque them down to the manufacturer's specs and then you turn them one flat further in order to crush in order to seal the steel line. When installing the high pressure fuel pump make sure that it's timed correctly. That means check the vehicle service manual. Now we can't tell you exactly what it's going to be because it's different on every manufacturer. Some vehicles are going to even have an arrow on the pump for this orientation. Once again check that service manual. When you're looking at this pump Let's use mode 6 out of this vehicle to determine is this pump doing what it's supposed to be doing. Now let's just look at the red box there. It says we're going to be talking about the fuel system monitor on bank 1 and of course there's one for bank 2 on V engines. We talk about the relative cylinder air fuel ratio imbalance. As we read from left to right we can see the minimum is zero, the maximum is zero, and what was measured the last time this monitor ran is zero. And that means the relative cylinder air fuel ratio does not have an imbalance. It means that it's balanced. A fuel pump that was faulty, high pressure fuel pump, that's faulty couldn't supply a continuous fuel flow so that each cylinder was balanced correctly. Now the relative cylinder air fuel ratio and balance for bank 2 is 0 also. Now this is part of mode 6. This is how you functionally use mode 6. What we're looking at is an air fuel ratio imbalance. Now if our value was greater than 0 that means we would have an imbalance between the cylinders. It doesn't necessarily point to the fuel pump. It could be pointing to the injectors themselves or their circuits. When we look at other mode 6 data don't forget that we have misfire counters on diagnostic test mode 1 or PIDs and of course diagnostic test mode 6 and uh, this would be the test results of the monitors and in this case we see no misfires for any cylinders. Once again a misfire does not indicate that the pump is bad but it could mean that it's pumping erratically or the coil on plug units are different from one cylinder to the rest or one's not working or one's failing at certain temperatures or the injector or its circuits are bad. So when we look at misfires and we say hey we got a P0300 a good place to start here is mode 6 telling us which cylinder and then take our diagnostics from there.